Well, welcome back to Life Journey Production Studios. This is Keith. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to take a quick look at how to create a macro for a stinger in your live show, your video recording in your studio, or a live production, and you want a stinger to come over the screen just like this one. Then we're going to show you how to create a macro just like I played right now. And now that stinger, again, is playing from my hyperdeck. And I have two hyperdecks in my studio, so I could have the stinger ready to go in a macro. I could follow that by a video or have a video cut to it. Um, and that's one reason why to have multiple hyperdecks. But if you have one hyperdeck, you can do a stinger, but you need to have a hyperdeck that has some important outputs in it. And there is some hyperdecks now available since 2021 that do not have the two SDI outs that you need. And that is a SDI A and SDI B. And there's even other tools that Blackmagic Design has that you can use to bring in animated graphics from like, Pro Presenter and things like that through Thunderbolt port. But we're going to be talking specifically about creating macros for your ATEMs as well as using a Hyperdeck. Now, the other Hyperdeck that does not have this tool is the new Hyperdeck Studio HD that came out in July of 2021. And then in April of 2022, the Blackmagic Design announced a desktop version of that pretty much the same. It's called the Hyperdeck Shuttle HD. And neither one of those two devices, the Hyperdeck Studio HD or the new Hyperdeck Shuttle HD, neither one of those have that key channel. In fact, the Shuttle only has a HDMI out and an HDMI input. It does not even have a SDI out, a A channel or a B channel. You can still play graphics from the Shuttle, but you would have to use a chroma key and create a graphic with a green background like people do all the time when they're doing green screen work. But we're gonna be talking about how to use two channels from your Hyperdeck. One is fill, one is key, and those come into your ATEM Mini, ATEM Mini Pro, ATEM Mini Pro ISO. You can use the Extreme, ATEM Mini Extreme, the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO, as well as the other um, higher end switchers by Black Mag Design and even some of the older um, um, switchers by Black Mag Design. You can use those, but you're going to take up two inputs to do what we're going to talk about. And then also, not only do you need to have your Hyperdeck hooked up, you need to make sure you have a graphic that has a key channel. And we call it a pre multiply graphic. You can do that in Final Cut. You can do that in Adobe Premiere, After Effects. And there's lots of softwares out there. And you need to create that graphic with transparency and animation. And then you need to export it um, with a alpha channel. Um, and that's just what it's called when you export it. So it's going to have that key channel that's going to key out the background and it's going to have a alpha channel. And so it's going to really send two signals. And that's why you need to have those two um, outputs coming out of your Hyperdeck because this plays in your Hyperdeck. Now, there's other ways to put pre-multiplied graphics on the screen that are still graphics. You can do that in your media player and you can use your keys to turn on pre-multiplied, but we're gonna do an animated graphic using our key as well as turn on pre-multiplied so that stinger can go across the screen with transparency and look crisper and cleaner as it flies across the screen. And that's usually what stingers do. Now you can use the same technique to make macros to play your lower thirds right at the bottom of the screen a little bug on the top of the screen if that's what you need it to do or any other kind of transparent or animated graphic on your screen. But we're gonna focus on how to build a macro for a stinger and a lot of the same steps apply. Now, the other thing to understand about a stinger is that a lot of times you're gonna use it pretty much to either change segments in your, in your um, um, recording or in your live event or hide a transition behind it. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get ready my second camera, which is this one right here, and I'll wave. So that's ready to cut to it, but I wanna hide this transition so that you guys don't see this happening. So I'm gonna play my stinger and I'm gonna make that same auto transition with my other hand. So play my stinger macro. And then I hit the transition and I can do the same thing again. I'm gonna hit my stinger macro. 
and now I'm back over in this view. And that's one of the reasons you would use a stinger in the middle of a live event or a live broadcast. So keep that in mind. There's a number of different reasons why you'd use a stinger for segments, or you can use it to change from a graphic to a image uh, camera, a camera to a graphic. And if you have more than one HyperDeck, you could even cut from an input like this run your stinger and then cut to the hyperdeck because you would need two hyperdecks, one to play the stinger and the other hyperdeck to play that video that you're cutting to behind it. And now you know why many people will have more than one hyperdeck or even up to four, you can use automation inside the control software by Blackmagic Design to up to four hyperdecks. Which brings me to the next thing here. Let's turn the logo back on the screen and we're gonna cut to SuperSource. And here is my super source layout and you can see my desktop software. It's right over there. And so what I wanna do right now is we're gonna close the macros for right now. And we're gonna go down to the bottom left-hand corner. In fact, let's turn the logo off so you guys can see this. And down in the left-hand corner, you can see I have the little settings icon. We're gonna click on that. And we're gonna open up the HyperDeck folder. So you have the general folder, audio, multi-view, labels and HyperDex. And this is where you can have up to four HyperDex. You can see I have HyperDex 1, HyperDex 2, and this will work with a ATEM Mini or a ATEM Mini Pro, ATEM Mini Pro ISO. You just need to have the HyperDex hooked up. And you can see the primary channel is hooked up right here. So I have the primary channel in my extreme at five, but if you had like an ATEM Mini, ATEM Mini Pro, ATEM Mini Pro ISO, you might use channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four. In fact, most people will probably use channel one for their camera, channel two for their desktop, and three and four will be for the HyperDeck, three being the primary channel. And that's also the channel that is gonna auto roll when auto roll is on. And so we're gonna run a stinger from a macro, we want auto roll on. So we're actually gonna program it on when we create our macro, but I wanted you guys to know exactly where you go to find the HyperDeck settings, because that's where you're gonna go to tell your macro what to do. So I got auto roll on the first deck and the second deck, and we're gonna focus on the first deck today to create the stinger, um, and I'm gonna hit save. Now the same thing is true if you are in the control software for your um, ATEM Mini, ATEM Mini Pro, ATEM Mini Pro ISO, so let me go to connections. Let me open up my ATEM Mini Pro and hit connect. And when you get into the ATEM Mini Pro, and it's gonna open up here. You still go down to the bottom of the settings here and you still have the same HyperDex right here. Now, my HyperDex are not coming in um, to my ATEM Mini Pro, even though I can still automate them in the ATEM Mini Pro control software. I'm gonna do all my automating and my macros controlling them from my extreme, but this is where you would be. And you can see it's identical. It still has auto roll. You still gotta tell it what input. You definitely have to have an IP address. So your ATEM control software on your PC or Mac need to be connected to a network. Your HyperDeck needs to be connected to a network and that needs to be communicating so that they can connect. And that's what the IP address is used to do up here. And I have a video about a disconnect problem with the, with the um, IP address and I'll put a link right up here on the screen so you can watch that. So you know how to fix that. You just basically erase the last number replace it with a new number, and then hit enter, connect. It's gonna give you an error message. Then you put the right IP address back and you hit connect again. Don't know why that bug's happening. It may be because I have multiple HyperDex, multiple ATEMs, we don't know yet, but that bug is out there. So keep that in mind and hopefully it has been fixed by the time you watch this video. So I'm gonna hit save. Now I'm ready to create a macro, but I need to just make sure everything's working right. So I can get to my HyperDeck settings down here, but if I want to choose a clip, if I want to um, make some settings and hit play and all that stuff in my HyperDeck, I'm gonna go up here to the media player. And in the media player folder, you have palettes, which is where your keys are and your transitions and, and your, um, your color generators. And if you have that extreme or extreme ISO, that's where you're gonna find super source. So you can see I don't have super source our ATEM Mini Pro software, but if I go back up here and I hit connections and I go back and connect to my extreme ISO, which is where we're gonna create this macro. Now you can see I do have more choices up here. I have four 
upstream keys, ATEM Mini, ATEM Mini Pro, ATEM Mini Pro ISO only have one. I have two downstream keys. You can see them over here and I have two, but in the ATEM Mini Pro, you only have one. Now we're gonna use our downstream key and I'm gonna use my second downstream key and you're gonna use your first downstream key if you are creating this macro inside of ATEM Mini Pro, ATEM Mini or ATEM Mini Pro ISO. So I'm gonna use this downstream key and you're gonna use your regular single downstream key to set this up and all the other settings will be the same. So I'm gonna close key number four and I'm gonna go down here to my downstream keys and get this opened and ready because we're gonna use it to program a macro. Then I'm gonna switch over to my media player and I'm gonna click on HyperDex. And then here's where my HyperDex are. So in settings, you have HyperDex stacked on top of each other. So we'll save and get this out of here. And then in media player, they are side by side. So you can have up to four HyperDex connected to your control software at the same time. And you can automate all of those HyperDex as well. And um, you can go to the first HyperDex with this first little button here and the second HyperDex with a second button here. We're gonna focus on this first HyperDex. And then my clips that are inside my HyperDeck, and I'll pull those out real quick so you can see them. I have my Stinger and my subscribe logo right here on this SD card. I'm gonna put it back in my HyperDeck. One, it doesn't matter what slot is it is because if that slot is active, they will come up here on the screen. And just gonna make sure that my Stinger is there. I'm gonna play it and just watch my screen. Yep, it's there. We already know that because I've played it. And so I know it's ready to go. So now I'm ready to create a macro. I've got my HyperDeck hooked up. I made sure that it is set to auto roll and everything's communicating here uh, in the settings software. And now I'm ready to go. And I am going to use the downstream key, which is right here. The settings are right here under palettes and I have everything ready to create this macro. Now I'm gonna go up to macros on the top left of the screen and I'm gonna hit open macros. Now here's where it doesn't get difficult. It's just making sure that you know the steps. So step number one, right, was to make sure your HyperDex are all hooked up, ready to go. Step number two, let's make sure we have a graphic loaded and ready to go on our SD card and it is plugged in to our HyperDeck. We have to have our HyperDeck um, have two channels coming into our ATEM and um, we need to know what those channels are. I would recommend that you go into the settings menu and actually relabel those. And so here's where the labels are in the settings menu under labels. And so I've changed my um, HyperDeck one comes into channel five and I have it five fill and I have our HyperDeck one fill. And over here in channel six, I have it HyperDeck one key. So I've relabeled them. So when I go to select them in my downstream key, which you're gonna see here pretty soon, I don't have to remember what um, input they're in because I've relabeled those inputs, what they are in the software. And you're gonna see that here right now. So I don't wanna use this page. There's too many macros already. So on the bottom, I can go left and right. I'm on page one, so I can go right. I got some macros there as well. Let's hit the... Nice empty page right here. Now the next step is you're gonna create a macro and you have two options once you open up the macro screen. We'll pull this up a little higher so you can see it. You can choose between create and we're gonna create a macro and run. So in the run menu, you can run macros and you can see I have all these macros here I've created before that I could run. And I would just simply click on a macro and I would hit play right here. But we're gonna create a macro. So back over on that screen going to go back down here to the extra page. Now, the next step is, do I want it in this slot? Like, do I want to have a stinger on the air and next to that, a subscribe on the air side by side? I can pick where I want that macro to go or it will default to the first empty slot. So I can prove this. If I create a macro now and I write stinger test and I'm typing in the box what I want it to be called, and I hit record, it just turned record on and it's putting the stinger right here in that slot. That's not where I wanted it, so I'm gonna stop recording. I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna go up to these three little boxes up here because I have it lit up. I'm gonna go on this box and I'm gonna hit delete, goodbye. I don't want you there. I wanted it in this slot down here. 
So I light it up by clicking on it with my mouse, and now I'm gonna hit the plus button, which creates the macro in the slot I want. And now I'm gonna call this Stinger. And I'm gonna hit record. Now the control software is recording what I tell it to do. So it doesn't know where I'm at. So imagine you're in your car and you plug in an address and you're asking your GPS for directions or your navigation and it doesn't know where you're at. It can't get you to where you're going. It knows where the destination is, but it can't give you directions to get there because it doesn't have a clue where you are. So we need to tell the macro all of these steps. So now that we have it recording, now we need to tell it what we want it to do. And it doesn't know where we're at, like they just shared in the GPS story. So as we create this macro, we're gonna give it all the information it needs to have to be able to do what we want it to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna program all of this in our downstream key. So if you look over here, I'm gonna use this key right here. So in a minute, we're gonna turn that key on, but the first step we wanna do so we want to go up here to our media player and we want to find the deck that we're using. And I'm not using deck two, I'm using deck one. And then I want to use the stinger and it's already lit up. Now, my macro has no clue that that's the stinger I wanted to use. Remember, I it was already chosen before I ever hit record. So I'm going to click away from it because again, I want to tell the macro where we're at so that it knows where we're going. So I click away from it and now I click back and now I just programmed in the XML macro file that I wanted to play that particular uh, stinger. Um, so it knows that now. So I'm done with that step. I wanna go down here now and make sure it's auto rolling. So I'm clicking on the bottom left hand side. I wanna go up here to HyperDex and I wanna make sure auto roll is on, it's on, but just to be safe, again, the macro doesn't know where we're going. Uh, it knows where we're going, but it doesn't know where we're at. So we're going to turn this off. So now it knows that this is off and we want it right back on again. And don't worry, this happens almost instantaneously. But we did want to know the HyperDeck needs to have auto roll on because we're macroing and we want it to just auto roll when we cut to it. And that would be by playing our macro. So we've done the first step, which is choosing that one particular um, stinger graphic in our hyperdeck over here. We've made sure we turned auto roll on and off and everything is connected. We're gonna hit save, very important because we've turned that auto roll on or off and then back on again. So I'm gonna hit save. And now we've done the second major step and created a macro. We told it what we want it to play in the hyperdeck and we also told it that we want it to auto roll. So the next thing that we need to do now is tell what the hyperdeck, um, what it's gonna play in because we could just play it in the input channel, which is channel five, but this is a stinger. We want the stinger to cover everything else. And the downstream key is after all the other keys. It's after all the other inputs and all the other channels. And so it plays on the top of everything else. And that's really what a stinger is designed to do. It's designed to cover all of the other inputs and so I would always recommend that you program your stinger in your downstream key. And you say, Keith, well, I use my downstream key for other things, that's fine. We're gonna program it to change to the hyperdeck and then we're gonna actually program it to go back. So how are we gonna do that? Well, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go into our palette menu. We're done in the media player. We're gonna go into our palettes. We wanna go to our downstream key. I have two, we're gonna do downstream key number two. And I want to go down here and I want to change it. Right now it's set to my HyperDeck 2. And so I want it to change to HyperDeck 1, which is fill. Again, if you have an ATEM Mini, Mini Pro, Mini Pro ISO, you might have your HyperDeck in channel 3 and 4. I have my first HyperDeck in channel 5 and 6. And I have my other, other HyperDeck in 7 and 8. So I want fill to be um, HyperDeck fill one, and I want key to be HyperDeck uh, one key. So now I have channels five and six, and I kept the five there, and I kept the six there. It just makes things easier for me. And I also want pre-multiplied on because this is a pre-multiplied graphic. So what did I do now? I took the clip, I took my HyperDeck that's ready to auto roll, and I've put it in my downstream key. So now when I turn my downstream key on the air, 
which is the very next step, it's going to go on the air. Now, um, as this is all set up, I don't need to change the transition time. I just need to now set things in motion. So I'm going to turn the downstream key on. And my HyperDeck is set to auto roll. So as soon as I turn this on, it's actually going to go ahead and auto roll, which is perfectly fine because it's going to do the same thing again when we push the macro button and we play it later. So I'm going to turn this on and it's going to actually play my macro across the screen. I wanted you guys to see that. So it actually played. So we know the macro is working. We know the stinger is working. We know our HyperDeck is doing what it's supposed to do. We know it auto rolled. So we know the stinger is going to play, but here's the challenge. A stinger takes three seconds to play, and we want to turn it back off again when we're done. So how do we program a macro to wait three or four seconds before it turns itself off? We do that right up here with the add a pause button. So we're going to add four clicks right here. We have two boxes. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, because my stinger is a little over two uh, three seconds long, and I want it to completely play before I turn it off. I'm going to hit add pause. Now we told our macro to turn the key on, play the HyperDeck automatically, play the stinger, and then about four seconds later, we're going to tell it to turn back off. Okay, so now that I've put the pause in, I'm still recording. Now I'm going to turn the stinger off or the downstream key off. Now it's off the air but I want one more step. I want to go back into my settings in my HyperDeck and I want to change these back to my older HyperDeck because that's the default settings inside my control software and I want to reset it. You may want to reset your macro. That means once this macro is done playing, it's going to switch everything back and you're going to be able to see it on the screen when we play this macro. So all the steps are done. We've created a macro that plays a stinger. We didn't teach it to do any transitions, so we'll have to do those manually. If I wanted to, I could tell this macro to play my stinger and switch to another camera in the middle of it. And I would do that by setting the timer for 1.5 seconds, have it transition, pause for another um, second, and then I would have it turn off. But we're going to do a simple stinger macro so that you can hit a button and your stinger will play. And that's what we're programming right now. So we're all done. We're going to go up here to the record button. We're going to hit it again with our mouse button, put our mouse over it and hit it again. And now there is our stinger. Now I can click on it all day long and I can't play it under the create um, folder. So I need to go to the run folder, click on it again, we're gonna hit play and we're gonna see if the macro we just created actually worked. And just pay close attention to the downstream key number two and you're gonna see it instantly switch right here and then it'll be back by the time the stinger's over. So watch this that spot. And now it's back again. So again, that is how you program a stinger in your ATEM control software by using your HyperDeck. Now I could create a stinger in my HyperDeck 1. I could create a stinger in my HyperDeck 2. It just depends on how many HyperDecks you have. That's how you program a macro. You just need to understand the steps. And it's always important to kind of make sure you have everything set up right and everything kind of thought out before you start creating a macro so that you don't get um, all flustered, go through those steps. So hopefully this video helps you. Create a macro for a stinger for your live show or for your recording in your ATEMs, whichever ATEM you have. And again, remember those first three original ATEMs from the ATEM Mini, ATEM Mini Pro, ATEM Mini Pro ISO. They have one upstream key and one downstream key. And then the extreme and extreme ISO as well as some of the higher end decks have switchers have more than one key um, in the upstream category and more than one key in the downstream category. So now if you enjoyed this video, I would love to encourage you to subscribe as well as like this video and share it with anybody else that you think will be helped by this video. I am Keith. This is Life Journey Production Studios, and I hope to see you in the next video.